Hi buddies, hope you are doing fine. In this series, we are going to see the summary of the play that fast is written by Christopher Marlowe. First, let's see the introduction of the author. If you are ready, let's get started. Christopher Marlowe was born on February 6, 1564 at Canterbury. In the same year, two months before of uh, Christopher Marlowe's birth, uh, Shakespeare uh, himself was born in this uh, same year. And uh, Christopher Marlowe was one of the university wits among uh, Thomas Large, John Lyley, Robert Greene, Thomas Kitts and uh, George Peel. And these are all the above mentioned uh, university wits uh, who are all strictly follow the dramatic uh, techniques in their plays and uh, uh, they are uh, belong to the period of uh, Queen Elizabeth and uh, if you want to describe about uh, Christopher Marlowe who is uh, the greatest of Shakespeare's predecessors and a greatest translator, poet and also a playwright uh, belongs to the period of uh, 16th century. His first play is uh, Tamerlane the Great which has two parts uh, written in the year 1587 and his uh, play Dr. Faustus uh, was uh, published in the year 1588 and then uh, he wrote uh, many plays like uh, The Jew of Malta in uh, 1590, Edward II uh, in uh, 1591 then uh, the massacre of paris in uh, 1593 and is uh, the unfinished dido queen of carthage uh, written in the year 1593 and also he wrote uh, many poems like a hero and uh, leander then uh, he is also supposed to have uh, collaborated with uh, robert green and uh, george peel in uh, the contention and the true tragedy and also with uh, shakespeare in uh, titus andronicus and also henry the six the most considering and the prominent writer christopher marlowe who died in 30th May 1593. So now let's move on to the introduction of the play Dr. Faustus. Christopher Marlowe who presents a young German scholar named Faustus who getting weary of the various branches of knowledge available to him and uh, he finally turns to magic and also he discovers that uh, universal power which will be within his uh, reach if he uh, acquires proficiency as a magician. When the good angel and the evil angel seek to influence him in their different ways, but he refuses to listen to the former one, that is uh, good angel's uh, counsel. And uh, the scholars of Wittenberg also uh, feel sorry for him, but he doesn't care about the scholars and also his uh, well-wishers. And finally, he is uh, carried away by the devils. Uh, this is the final ending of this play. So, Dr. Foster's uh, which uh, displays both the best and the worst elements of the Renaissance period. And Dr. Foster's uh, curiosity and the love of knowledge. And also the accusation of unlimited power which blinds him to the doom path. In the Elizabethan age, low comedy were uh, very popular among the Elizabethans. So, Christopher Marlowe who presents uh, low comedy in uh, many scenes uh, through the clown. And uh, Christopher Marlowe who includes the chorus uh, which is a very basic uh, feature of the tragedies of ancient Greece. And uh, through the help of chorus, he is telling us all about uh, Faustus like uh, his birth, his parentage, education and his uh, unfortune choice of magic and all the stuffs like uh, his uh, ambition. Likewise, occurs in the first appearance of the chorus and the chorus who begins the play and ends the play. So, prologue and epilogue. So, these are all the main thing uh, which has uh, presented by the help of the chorus. Marlowe who followed the style of blank verse in this play and uh, he presents many moods like uh, repentance recklessness despair and so on so that's all about the introduction of the play dr fosters now we'll directly move on to the summary of the prologue and the act wise summary if you are ready let's get started first let's see the prologue of this play the prologue is spoken by the chorus here the chorus purpose is to tell the audience of the yearly life of Faustus, which is not enacted on the stage and uh, it just uh, says about that the poet which means uh, christopher marlowe who doesn't uh, intend to see 
about the battles like uh, battle of trasme nor has he any intention of amusing himself with the pleasures of love nor does he uh, intend to sing of the glory of the deeds of bravery performed by the proud uh, warriors and uh, he doesn't talk about the royal personages uh, uh, which cause a destruction of uh, great countries on the contrary he will present the drama of the life and fortunes and the destructions of uh, fastus in this prologue uh, which has uh, narrated by chorus and uh, the chorus keep on narrates that dr fastus was uh, born the parents of humble origin at the town of rhodes in germany later he went to wurtemberg where he was brought up by his uh, relatives quite early in life he made a wonderful progress in the study of theology and also he uh, acquired such knowledge uh, that soon the doctorate degree uh, which was uh, conferred upon him and also his knowledge which uh, surpassed other scholars also he felt proud of his knowledge and became a self centered and ambitious fellow for this inordinate ambition of dr fastus he punished by god and also overthrown from his high position and uh, he wants to study and also practice magic and this thought uh, which uh, lead to his own downfall and it is the drama of his life which would be enacted in this uh, play dr fastest written by christopher marlow that's all about the prologue narrated by chorus now we'll move on to the acquise and scene wise summary if you are ready let's get started when the curtain rises fastus is seen sitting in his study and uh, he is uh, dissatisfied with his present studies like uh, doctorate degree theology and his uh, other uh, such knowledge is and uh, he wants to examine the comparative value of the different subjects he has studied and uh, finds them all wanting so like uh, uh, philosophy logic theology law and also medicine so these are all the things uh, which has considered by him uh, that uh, which is equally unsuitable by him and these are the things uh, only uh, for uh, devoted years to the study of these subjects and uh, he is well versed in them but he is still merely a man he just uh, thinking like that and uh, he keep on thinks that and uh, wants to attain the power honor and also omnipotence this he can get only through the study and uh, practice of magic so he wants to study and practice the magic through that devil and uh, he says that yes sound magician is a mighty god and also he therefore uh, says that and uh, wants to decides that uh, want to take up the study of magic through its practice he would be able to conjure the spirits and thus uh, enjoy the power fit only for the gods therefore he calls his uh, servant uh, named uh, wagner and uh, ask him to request his friends walders and cornelius to come to him so the people uh, walders and cornelius uh, they are uh, black magicians and uh, he wants to get uh, advice from them uh, so only he uh, calls his uh, servant to invite them walders and uh, cornelius uh, these fellows are uh, not an ordinary people they are well versed in magic and uh, fastus thinks that uh, their advice would be of uh, great help of him so that uh, he wants to meet his friends uh, walders and uh, cornelius and in this very first scene the good angel and the evil angels uh, appear in front of dr fastus and uh, the good angel advises dr fastus to put aside the black magic and uh, it would only bring the wrath of god so the good angel advises him that uh, better you have to study other religious books like uh, the holy bible and then the evil angel uh, keep on uh, says that magic will uh, give you great powers and uh, you can uh, be better than uh, god so likewise uh, he tends uh, dr fastus and the two angels uh, go away from the place fastus reminds uh, still uh, form on his decisions to study and uh, wants to practice magic and he thinks that through the 
help of the magic he would able to command the spirits uh, and uh, they can uh, fetch for him the wealth of india bright pearls of the ocean all delicacies uh, in the four corners of the world and the spirits will answer his all questions and remove his uh, all doubts and they will reveal to him the secrets of foreign kings uh, and uh, with their help they would be able to construct a wall of brass around the germany and uh, he can make the river rhine uh, circle the city of wurtemberg where he lives okay so the in the wurtemberg where uh, fastest uh, who lives and uh, he can ask them to bring the large quantity of silk so that the students uh, at the university in uh, wurtemberg they may be dressed in a splendid manner in short uh, fastest will perform many a wonder with the help of his spirits so the reason fastest wants to attain the black magic through the help of the devils at the very next moment his friends uh, walders and cornelius arrives uh, to his place and uh, he assures uh, them that uh, their advice has uh, convinced him and also fastest is now determined to give up all other studies like uh, philosophy logic theology law and uh, medicine instead he wants to study and wants to practice the magic so that he may be as uh, perfect in the study of the art as was agripa then the two friends of uh, fastest uh, who agree to help uh, him and uh, they further tempt him to by telling him that uh, uh, through the study of black magic he shall have a host of spirits at his command and uh, they will protect him and perform his uh, every command order by fastest and the spirits can uh, form of uh, beautiful maidens and at other times they will bring to him the wealth of america italy and uh, spain like that his uh, friends uh, walders and uh, cornelius uh, who keep on uh, tends uh, fastest and uh, he says that uh, i just want to attain the power of uh, god and i don't want to remain uh, merely a man so his friends uh, tells him that uh, he can be able to learn the magic very easily uh, for he is already well versed in astrology and uh, chemistry and uh, uh, other subjects so if you want to attain many powers you have to better uh, study black magic like that uh, his friends uh, advises uh, and attempts uh, fastest on hearing all these things from his friends fastest more eager to learn magic than even ever before and now he asked them to demonstrate to him how to conjure spirits and then uh, walders advises him to go to some uh, lonely and uh, dense grove with uh, some books uh, of magic like uh, as a uh, roger bacon's book and uh, alchemist and also the holy bible with these books he can attain something from can get some idea from these books before uh, his friends uh, leave from his uh, home fastus invites them to dine with them and uh, now fastus is determined to conjure the spirits in the very first night and uh, he is more curiosity of the black magic and uh, through the help of it he wants to attain the power to command the spirits enjoy in his life thus the scene ends with the curiosity of uh, fastus and uh, his interest to study the black magic from the very first scene we can get an idea about uh, fastus who is a typical Re- renaissance uh, figure which is uh, portrayed by christopher marlowe in this uh, play dr fastus also this scene is very important for a number of reasons uh, about uh, fastus is a typical figure of uh, christopher marlowe who is aspiring after knowledge uh, infinite because he is not content with merely being a man so he wants to aspire something to be a very god on earth and also to want to be a more powerful person than others thus the very first scene ends with the more curiosity of dr fastus and his wish to study black magic and now we'll move on to the next scene the second scene opens with the conversation of two scholars who are friendly to fastus and uh, 
they are uh, coming to Wurttemberg and they are uh, now standing in front of the house of Dr. Fastest. Why they are coming uh, to Wurttemberg means they feel uh, something fishy about Dr. Fastest. So they are uh, came to Wurttemberg and want to see and want to meet uh, Dr. Fastest in his home. Just then Wagner, the servant of Fastest, who arrives on the scene, and then the two scholars uh, who started to inquire about Dr. Fastest uh, to Wagner and also whereabout uh, of their uh, master. Then uh, the servant Wagner uh, tells them that God in heaven knows and also uh, when uh, the two scholars uh, ask him about uh, Dr. Fastest to him and uh, that uh, if he does not know about uh, where uh, his master is at the time and also says that how can a servant who doesn't know about his master for this Wagner uh, who replies the same thing which uh, he had said earlier to them through these lines we can see the humorous sense of uh, humor sense of uh, Wagner and also through this way he cuts jokes with them and also this scene is in a comic vein intended to provide dramatic uh, relief to the audiences uh, after the tension of the first scene uh, which was uh, in a very tragic and also in a very serious on hearing the words of uh, Wagner the two scholars are very confused and uh, in a uh, perplexed mood and uh, they keep on uh, questioning to Wagner after that Wagner uh, who reveals the truth to the two scholars that his uh, master was dining with his friends uh, that Waldus and uh, Cornelius and that they should not even dare approach the dining hall at the very moment and also he says that if we are uh, even dare to approach the dining hall uh, where his master was dining with his friends he will uh, certainly punish us and also it would be displeasing him. After that, the two scholars thus know that uh, Dr. Fastest was in a uh, bad company. Uh, he was with uh, two wicked magicians uh, like uh, the devil people. Uh, so here uh, he mentioned uh, only the people uh, Walders and uh, Cornelius and uh, they are uh, thinking that the two wicked magicians uh, who certainly lead uh, Fastest astray. Uh, so they therefore decide to approach the rector of the university and uh, want to request him to use his influence with uh, Dr. Fastest to bring him back to the path of virtue. After this thought, the two scholars uh, who move on to meet the rector of the university. Thus the second scene uh, ends with the comic as well as some uh, serious and uh, important stuff of uh, Dr. Fastest and uh, this scene also serves to heighten the seriousness of the upcoming scenes and also this scene is an uh, integral part, part of this uh, play. Now we will move on to the next scene. So the third scene uh, starts in the late night and uh, as the curtain rises uh, we can find uh, Fastest uh, who conjuring in a lonely grove where he draws some lines and uh, circles on the ground and also he reads out the magic formula at once uh, Mephistopheles uh, who appears before Dr. Fastest then uh, Fastest uh, who orders Mephistopheles to go back and uh, return to him in the guise of uh, a friar for uh, the holy shape and also he wants to become a devil best Soon uh, the devil Mephistopheles uh, who obeys Dr. Fastest and uh, goes away. After that Dr. Fastest who is very glad to find that uh, he has uh, acquired full power over the spirit world and that uh, he can now command uh, great Mephistopheles uh, for his uh, every wishes to fulfill. After some moment later and also in a very soon time Mephistopheles who returns to Dr. Fastest and also tells to him that he is a servant to the great uh, Lucifer and also that uh, he cannot obey him and uh, carry out his uh, commands without the permission of his great master. But uh, he says that at the present he had come there in the hope of getting his uh, soul for uh, Lucifer for he had renounced God, Christ and uh, the Holy Scriptures. 
because uh, it was his business to get the souls of uh, sinners like uh, dr fastus and in his, and and in this uh, way to enlarge the kingdom of uh, lucifer on hearing the words of uh, mephistopheles dr fastus who started to questioning him uh, that uh, the things about uh, his master lucifer for this mephistopheles uh, who replies to dr fastus that uh, once uh, lucifer he was uh, an arch angel in uh, heaven from where he was uh, thrown down to hell because uh, he grew ambitious and also rebelled against the authority of god and the very next moment uh, he was uh, thrown down to hell and also mephistopheles uh, who mentioned himself uh, to him uh, he is uh, also one of those uh, unhappy spirits who were uh, turned out of uh, heaven along with lucifer and also they are uh, living in uh, hell which is damned by god after this uh, dr fastus uh, question further for this mephistopheles uh, tells fastus that wherever he goes he constantly suffers the tortures of uh, hell and also he is never out of hell and can never forget the that uh, uh, he had once seen the face of god and tasted the joys of heaven also he wants uh, fastest that magic also is an uh, damn one even then dr fastest uh, who remains uh, adamant after the words of uh, mephistopheles and also he is uh, very determined to practice magic also the black art and uh, now uh, Dr Fastus who is uh, ready to suffer the eternal death in uh, hell if only he may enjoy the pleasures of the earth for a period of 24 years and uh, during this period have mephistopheles to attend upon him in the end uh, he asks uh, mephistopheles uh, to go back to his master uh, lucifer for his permission after that uh, would uh, he would uh, meet him in the study at uh, midnight when mephistopheles uh, goes away from dr fastus fastus who salilakes over the powers that magic would give him with mephistopheles as his attendant spirit he would be able to perform even the impossible and uh, through his power would uh, exceed even that of the greatest emperor of the world thus the scene uh, ends with the unlawful path of dr fastus uh, who wants to that is uh, even uh, willingly wants to takes uh, to the path of sin uh, after the warning of uh, mephistopheles uh, goes unheeded so this scene uh, also very important uh, for a number of reasons so now we'll move on to the next scene uh, that is fourth scene uh, which uh, is is in a street the fourth scene is in a comic vein why because the servant of fastus uh, that is uh, wagner who meets a rustic in the street uh, wagner uh, who wants to have the rustic as his servant so he promises to pay him uh, good a- good wages and also uh, food to him if only he would agree to serve uh, wagner when the rustic that is the clown who refuses to do uh, the wish of uh, wagner after the very next moment wagner who conjures the two evil spirits that is uh, baliel and belcher uh, to frighten the ignorant rustic uh, um, clown when the two devils uh, who were uh, appears before the clown uh, the clown is frightened and also promises to obey and also serve uh, wagner willingly thus the fourth scene ends with a comic manner and uh, this scene uh, provides some entertainment to the audiences uh, in a low manner also this uh, scene also an uh, integral part of this play so that's all about the summary of the first act hope this video will be useful one and let's see the remaining acts in the upcoming videos Thank you so much for watching this video till the end. If you are having any suggestion, let me know in the comment section. We will see you in the next video. Tata bye bye.